Good morning, everyone. Today is Sunday, and we're gonna do something today that I haven't done on here with everyone. It's been a minute, so let's go. It's gonna be fun. But first, I have an absolutely gorgeous, perfect giant solitail butterfly to release in my garden. So let me go take care of that, and then we'll get to it. So y'all, we are going to do a full garden tour. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about all my host plants and a lot of my native plants and just, just go kind of end to end, walk through, see what butterflies are out, that sort of thing. I normally only do this for my members, but um, for this month in July, I did a live with them and I loved it so much. I think we're going to do lives monthly lives so if you want to go live where you can ask me questions live <laughs> join my channel all right let's go tour and today's tour guides shall be Ringo and Ray in case you're new here this is Ray and that's Ringo we just got Ringo he's a puppy <laughs> But he's just as big as Ray. All right, so we're on the patio that I put in myself. Every single one of these stones was laid by yours truly. And then straight across is this little border grass surrounded section that's just got some random plants in it. Um, my husband usually maintains this. He, he like picks plants to put in here. However, I've had some plants that have stayed in here and he's not allowed to get rid of them. Like my collection of non-native porter weed, which is one of my favorite plants. This is where one of the plants that started with for me, it was the porter weed and the red pentas from the beginning, like 20... 30 years ago these have been in my life so they're staying in my life because I love them and so do the skippers and the um, the big bumblebees and monarchs and golf fritillaries I see everybody on these so I have a whole patch of them they freeze back but then they come back and I just absolutely love them. And then also in here are some plants that my husband has put in. There's a couple of goldenrods here. And then this is my original privet senna that died back, froze back. We thought it was gone, but it came back. I think it's come back three times now. So happy about that. This is a snow square stem and I have some more on the other side and they're not blooming right now but they're really really pretty flowers there is another privet sana right there that just kind of came up from seed on its own most likely from my original over there see look at look at look at the activity are you seeing it mm -hmm. porter weed this is not native I do have the native we'll get to it later and with that, one of our guides has to take a nap. Mm -hmm. But it's okay because you've got me and I have energy for days. Okay, next. As you come around from the section we were just in, you come over here to this corner. And this is where my sassafras tree is. That, gosh, I think it's three years old now. And it is now really, really, really going up. It's put out this season, those three new top stems. So it's getting super tall. It's going to be hard for me to find caterpillars up there. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm just thrilled that it is happy here. I also, oh, it is a host plant for... Um, spice bush swallowtail, those are the ones that turn green and then orange. Mm -hmm. I also have four potted pawpaw trees 
This is the regular large one that um, I think is called Triloba. And then that one, I'm not sure what it is, but it is a papa. It's a smaller one, but it's not the reticulata, which is the one I want to find. And then this papa is the small flower papa. And then I have another one of the large ones here in a pot. That's how much I want the zebra swallowtails to come live permanently in my garden. And I still have more pawpaws. <laughs> and then right beside that, this is a false indigo and happens to be blooming. <laughs> it's blooming way up high. So I'm going to go pull that um, stem branch down so you can see the flowers because they're really amazing. They are fuzzy purple and then on the very tips they get like this orangey golden and it's like sparkly in the sunshine and they they're they're purpley from the top of the stem down and it it like it like slowly wears away or blows away I don't know exactly how it works but they're really 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 cool and that is the false indigo. And then coming around the bend, I have my Monstera. I don't talk about my Monstera hardly at all, but you've probably seen it in the background quite a lot. Um, this was from one of my best friends from high school. She gave me a cutting of one from her yard, and this is that plant, and it's huge. It's like growing all back everywhere. We have to rein it in quite frequently. Its leaves are huge. It is extremely, that was, that was the dogs. They just ran into <laughs> the chimes. It is extremely happy here, and it's very, very, very healthy. Look at those leaves. And then coming over here, I have a variegated hibiscus. And then as we walk around it, this is the shade garden. And in the shade garden, we have my spice bush. Back in the corner, um, let me go back there. There you go. With the like sprawly sticky up here, I'm using sprawly again. This is going to be my new word. That is a snowberry, and it hasn't gotten berries in, on it, but it, it's like it's like growing all over the place. It's got these long, long. Let me let me get back there and dig in it so I can show you. It's got these really long pieces that just kind of travel everywhere back in there. And then in front of it, I'm so happy it um, is blooming, is my rouge plant. And we have a lot of these. I think they are so pretty. This is a native. The um, snowberry is a native. This gets these little red berries and then the white flowers and they do both at the same time so it makes them really interesting there's some more and then there's another ruche plant and behind it is my not a dog hobble <laughs> and if you don't know what that means you have to go watch a few videos back i don't remember which one it was but this is a wild black cherry tree Mm -hmm, that's over here in my shade garden. They don't typically go in shade, but it's doing just fine. And the eastern tiger swallowtails have been laying eggs on it, so we're, we're just going to leave it and let it be happy. And then around the bend, he, and then right back there is my other pawpaw. There is a beauty berry. And then these little plants here that aren't so little are frostweed. 
And frostweed, let me tell you, they get beautiful white flowers on them, but they get super tall and then they fall over. I'll show you what I mean. On a good note, they will turn up to the sun, but this one right here, it's, it's base is back there. Look at this one here. It's coming upright, but look where it's coming from over there. That one is curved back there, but then it's going upright. And then when they get too heavy, they'll just fall forward. So the trick with these is to cut them. Uh, you can see I cut this one here. And when you cut them, they'll split. And then the, the having the three branches come out, even though I did it too late on this one, it was already leaning forward. Um, but this is where I tried to do it. But if you cut them while they're going straight up from the base, then when they split out, it'll distribute the weight more evenly and they won't fall over. They'll be a lower plant with more like a shrub instead of this tall um, thing that's going to fall over in your garden. But let me tell you, when they flower, they're beautiful. Like this one. This one's about to flower. And uh, pollinators love them. This is a native also. All of these are native. Beautyberry, pawpaw, frostweed, wild black cherry, a rouge plant. There's another snowberry back there. Can you see it? It's going up, 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 up. And then branches. That one is native. So this is kind of like our native shade garden. And here's the divide where we can go out to the rest of the garden or up into the potting tree house where I just recently did this little bed with the caladiums and the joe pie weed, which the joe pie weed is blooming. Let's go look. It's gorgeous. The joe pie weed is also a native. It's a pollinator and butterfly favorite. This is the sweet joe pie weed and it likes more um, shade. So that's why it's where it is and it's beautiful. It gets these pinky, kind of pinky lilac-y flowers. And then across from the shade garden is the front half of the wild flower garden that I'm working on. You can see this is the end that is all plumbago and salvia. I love the salvia, but I don't need a whole half garden of it and I don't need the plumbago. The plumbago is not native, but I do see a lot of um, butterflies and pollinators going to the flowers. So I might keep some of them, but, but I don't need this many. Oh, and also right here in with my Joe Pye weed is my little wafer ash tree. And it is the host to um, Eastern Tiger Swallowtails and I believe Giant Swallowtails. Right now it's trying to grow because I kept taking cuttings off of it. <laughs> it's my first round of Eastern Tiger Swallowtails. So we're just going to leave it be and letting it grow. And then over behind this elephant ear, I have a little, I have a little trellis that has some Maypop incense growing on it. And then up we can go into the tree house, which is empty except for some pots. Um, so I, I think... I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do up here. But look at how the maypop. There's maypop growing in here. And all my split leaf philodendron leaves are encroaching. Uh, I think I'm going to start using this like to put some of the potted plants that I'm growing. And I think I might put pots of zinnia seeds up here. Because it gets good sun and it will keep Ray and Ringo from eating them so they get a chance to grow and then not when they're nice and full. 
I can move them out to my garden. So looking out the door of my garden room, we step out and there's the porter wheat garden. We look over here and there's the whole patio, sassafras tree areas right over there. Right behind me is my cactus collection. And then as I come and walk around the bend, over there's the shade garden. Here is the middle runway where I'm slowly putting in the wildflower garden. And then over here are some random potted things that run down alongside my garden room. And look at all the zinnia seeds I, I put in there. They're just coming up super nicely and the dogs haven't figured out they're here yet. So shh, don't tell them. And this is a section that you guys see a lot because I'm constantly walking up and down here when I'm filming. Um, so we won't spend a whole lot of time here, but this is my new wildflower garden I'm working on. And you can see I slowly, like as I get new plants, I take out a little plumbago. And so I've worked through like this section here. And yeah, there, this is a new, um, Asclepias tuberosa, which is a milkweed for monarch butterflies and queens. And they're all right in here. They are the Florida ecotypes. There's two different ecotypes in this garden right here. And then I have some zinnias. And, oh look, more porterweed. Some pentas, but I'm also bringing in some natives. I've got some natives on the other side. Some ironweed, some Coreopsis leavenworth. There's some asters in there. It's got a little bee on it. And then as we keep going, I've got some lakeside, lakeside sunflowers. And then coming up here to my first aquatic wetland, which I dug this whole area out, put pond liner in, and refilled it in, and then planted um, water-loving plants. I've got aquatic milkweed, um, some bush mint. That's here more to keep rats away from my swamp milkweed because they would come and eat it, and they don't like the mint particularly that mint seems to work. Um, here is my native porter weed. I've got some uh, coyote thistle. And here you can see is a swamp milkweed. And these tall guys right here are scarlet hibiscus. And I am so excited because they get the most gorgeous flowers and they are about to bloom. I grew these from seed. You know how awesome it is? Y'all try growing stuff from seed because it is so much fun to know that this big giant plant started with a tiny seed that I planted. That's, that's like, that's incredible. So make sure you stay tuned because when this blooms, you know, we'll be looking at it. And then just across on the other side is the other half of the wetland garden. Oh, look, you can see my little caterpillar guy. Remember I showed you that I covered, covered him? There he is, see? He has not been eaten by anybody because of this nice little um, organza bag held, held closed at the end. And I will probably very soon, oh my gosh, there's two. I saved two and I didn't even know it. <laughs> There's another one in there. That's fabulous. Um, that's fabulous. I will probably move those two onto another stem and and then recover them, you know, as they eat more of the leaves in that one. So in here, I have a lot more swamp milkweed. Um, I have more coyote thistle. I have aquatic milkweed. I have clustered bush mint to keep the rats away. I have these absolutely gorgeous sleepy hibiscus that I grew from seed. Look at these guys. 
They are magnificent. And then in the middle, I don't remember what this is. There's two plants here. Three. There's three plants here. There's this one. Look how tall it is. There is uh, this one. Look at the leaves. It's got this really like thick um, vein coming out. And then there's this one. And I don't remember what they are. Like, I don't remember. I should use my iNaturalist. I, I mean, when they bloom, it'll be a lot easier to tell. So I've just been kind of waiting for them to bloom. So I know my sleepy hibiscus. I want to say this is some type of something sunflower. Um, but it, it, it'll, be, it'll be a fun surprise. But all of these are natives. I do know that. My Asclepius incarnata, swamp milkweed, aquatic milkweed, the bushman, the sleepy hibiscus. I also have frog fruit and um, water, high, water hyssop in here, which are ground covers, which are hosts to the peacock, the white peacock. And that is all running through the lower end. Like you can see, it, it just goes all up in there and there's some weeds back there but I don't care because you can't see them unless you really want to and then this is just the back side of it and you can see get off of their milkweed bug I am about to get some blooms and you can also see that there are a lot of munch marks so it is being well used So here's a view of my wetland garden from the other side, looking across and down the wildflower garden and the plumbago and salvia. And my walkway that I'm still launching with my big piece of cardboard. Isn't it beautiful? So turning over here is a whole bunch of different things. I've got firebush all across the back there. And then that is a sweet almond tree that I've been working on shaping, which I have some work to do because you can see those pieces sticking up. And then there's just a random mix of some tithonia and pentas and salvias. And my little water feature that needs some fresh water in it. This is just an this is just an upside down plant stand, and it's got the rubber grippies, which is nice because it makes the plate not slide. And this is just a big plate I bought at a thrift store for two dollars. So easy as that to add some water features to your garden. Oh look, who's right there? And this is a Barbados cherry tree that um, got caught in a freeze and it just sent out some growth from the base. And so I've turned it into a bush, but it hasn't flowered yet. It's not native. And then behind all this, I had two Darrow's blueberry. That one's the newer one I just put in this year. And then this is my older one. They get the prettiest coloring. Look at the colors of the leaves. Is that not gorgeous? I love those. And then back in there, there's a little bit of trellising that has my Wooly Dutchman's pipe vine on it. I can't even get to it anymore because there's a bunch of Tithonia that has come up and I really, I need to come out and um, deadhead all these. So I have to come get my little clippers and go through and take care of that okay y'all now we're heading down to a little bit of magic I mean all of the garden I love but the main butterfly attracting flowers are on that end and there's some butterflies flying around so let's go see that end and let's go see some butterflies
There's my cart. I just came home from the nectary with a bunch of plants. You'll see those in a future video. Yeah, you gotta wait a little longer to see what I bought at the nectary. And then this is where my main flowers are and some host plants mixed in. And you can see there's a lot of little things moving around. And then those two chairs, that's our, our extra chair, but those two chairs there where my husband and I sit and just watch it all. We sit, we visit, we relax. The dogs hang out with us. The gray chair is mine and that chair is my husband's. And it's just absolutely beautiful just to come out here and sit and relax. So mix in here you'll find all kinds of things from zinnias that I grow from seed, um, red pentas, porterweed, pink pentas, and there's some host plants in pots through here, like a spice bush. Up front is a wild lime and a pawpaw tree. There's another wild lime. Uh, wild limes are host to the giant swallowtails, and um, they're only native like in central and south Florida. So I, I, see, I see a lot of people are like, where, where do we get those? Uh, unless you live in central and south Florida, you're going to have to use a different host, which there are others for the giant swallowtails. Um, up north or north of me, um, rue is a good one. It's really easy to grow, but it does not like my Florida heat, at least here in my garden. And then over here is a whole bed that's pretty much all red pentas. But I have um, some bee balm in it too that's blooming. And I've got some Maypop incense, Passiflora incense, which is a hybrid. It's not the native, but it serves a good purpose for feeding golf fritillary caterpillars and zebra longwings. You can see there is a beautiful sulfur butterfly, and then right there is a partridge pea, which is a host plant for the sulfur butterfly. And when I say host plant, that's the plant that the caterpillars have to eat, because butterfly caterpillars can't just eat anything. So that's what plants you need in your garden when I say host plant, so that the butterflies will lay their eggs on it and then you'll get the caterpillars and you'll have the butterflies visiting and you get the whole thing it's fabulous and here's the walkway back to my work area i'll talk about that in a minute and the um the two host trees that i potted in my last video and here's another um, pot over here that has a partridge pea and a bird pepper. Uh, the mockingbirds love the bird pepper. They'll come sit over here and pluck those off. They're so cute, little tiny peppers. And then behind here, I have some coral fire spike, which is not native, but is very Florida friendly. Look how tropical it looks. It's gorgeous gorgeous and then down below I have Kunti which is a host plant to the Atala butterfly which is endangered um, but they like more coastal salty air kind of places and I'm in the center of the state so it's not likely I'll see them here but you never know so I'm ready And then back there is a cow pea on a trellis and some Ruellia ground cover. And this is a butterfly pea, which is a host plant to the long-tailed skipper. And you can see there has been, well, first of all, I have a lot of long-tailed skippers in my garden, so I know it's working, but you can tell you have caterpillars when you see this on the leaves. They make these little tents to live in. So if you lift those up, there might be caterpillars under them. And I can see that I have a lot of 
that situation on this plant, so it's doing its job. Not to mention the gorgeous flowers. And right behind it is a random wild black cherry tree that actually the butterfly pea vine is growing into. So the flowers are part of the butterfly pea, not the wild black cherry. And then I have a really, really nice sized privet senna right beside it, which is also host to the sulfurs, just like the partridge pea. It's not blooming right now, but it gets gorgeous yellow blooms on it. And then I have a little patch of Mexican sunflower, a potted wild lime with some zinnias planted in the pot with it. And then that corner back there is a hot mess. We're not even going to walk there because I always get stuck on the wild lime because wild lime is very thorny. But I have a balloon milkweed. That's in the pot right there, not native, but it lives as an annual here. So it, you don't have to worry about the whole cutting back and it being invasive and all of that. I never have these coming up randomly anywhere. They only live for so long and then I just grow more. Okay, I did come over here after all because I want to talk a little bit more about the balloon milkweed. You can see, can you see who's on it up there? Mm -hmm, there's a monarch so it is a good host plant for them um, but it isn't native but I don't ever hear people fussing about it like they fuss about some other non-native plants like there's another caterpillar but you know best practice is to use native I do keep them in pots and like I said, they don't live forever. They'll die back and then they'll just be done. And then I just plant some seeds and grow some new ones. So, but they're really, really, really cool plants. And you can see this one right here. Look at it. It was completely munched away by caterpillars, but it's growing back nicely. And then back in the corner there, I have another wild lime and a big huge I think there's like three massive Mexican sunflower plants back in that corner and then right behind me poking me in the back <laughs> is another wild lime a lot of butterflies flying around it's an overcast day today so it actually makes it kind of nice for me because it's not as hot but you can see my garden does bring in a lot of butterflies and this isn't even the busy time of day. There's usually even more like in the morning when they're first coming down for nectar and then a lot will um, come out in the evening also kind of before they go roost for the night. So that was super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I haven't done an end-to-end -end tour for my whole channel. It's been a minute and, and well overdue. And um, if you'd like to know more about butterfly gardening and you're not already a subscriber, subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like the opportunity to be able to chat with me in live videos where you just see me, you don't, I don't see you. It's not like a Zoom call. It'd just be on YouTube. It'd be live where you could type in a, a question in the comment kind of thing like that. Or there's like a chat thing. Then join my channel membership. Um, information is below. You just where there's like a little carrot drop down by the title of this video, you just tap it and it opens up a drop down where you'll see the description of my videos start, but then it stops, you have to tap more and then it'll open the whole thing. And there is where you can find out how to join my channel. So I hope you take a minute and do that. Um, I love it. It's a lot of fun and it's just gonna get even more fun.